it's okay to use all this compost in a small area, even a, a small acreage crop garden, but how do we use it on a large area? How do we apply to the larger landscape? What is compost tea? Compost tea is an extension of compost. The inoculum organisms of compost extended in highly oxygenated water, a very small amount of material can extend out over an area. It takes the volume out of the compost and extends the life enormously. It is high quality compost. That's the crucial thing. You need good quality compost with lots of diversity of organisms. You can't make more organisms in compost tea, you can only extend their breed cycles. You take a volume of compost, in this case, we're using six litres of compost in a thousand litres of water. We blow air through it, oxygenating through the whole system so that it's highly oxygenated water. An equal volume of air to water so in this case, a thousand litres of air, a cubic metre of air every minute, whatever your volume of water is, you need the same volume of air every minute, blown through all the material and highly oxygenated, no dead spots. And some of it blows through the compost. In three to four hours, you've blown the organisms into the water. That's called an extraction. And you can put them on at that stage if you like. You will have to feed the soil so they have plenty of feed. If you want to extend their numbers, you want massive multiplications, you start the process, blow the organisms into the water, but put feed in there that actually extends their populations. So we put in some worm juice out of the worm farm, highly bacterial, and we put some worm castings in the bag with the compost, extra bacteria, good quality. We put in some kelp, we put in some humate, humic acid, natural element out of the forest, extends the fungi. We put in fish hydrolysate, which is like a, a fish emulsion. You can use all these sort of products. You can use molasses. You can use calcium nitrate. You can even put in flour if you like to extend the fungi. You can even put a little bit of blood in there. A, little, a few drops of chicken blood will extend the this may sound like witchcraft, but it's an extension of bacterial action. These bacterial foods and fungal foods, if you soak lucerne alfalfa in water for a few days and then pour that water in, it'll be really stimulated with protozoa, one of the elements that we're after extending in this mixture. After 24 hours, the brew's at full maximum. No more than 30 hours, 36 hours, absolute maximum. We've got a full complement of all the organisms that are going to breed in that water. We then have six to eight hours to get it onto the soil. Whether that's your garden, whether that's your pasture, whether that's your trees, your crops, your orchards, whatever it is, you've got to get that on the soil. You can water it down 50 to one and a cubic meter like that will stimulate really degraded soil. One hectare of that watered down 50 to 1 will stimulate a hectare. Quite quickly you'll do two hectares with it and once you have quite a lot of organisms going in your soil you'll be able to do five hectares with that one cubic meter. You can make a tiny little brewer in a 20 litre bucket and it'll do a garden and after that after you've got your soil well and truly stimulated with organisms, it'll do a whole hectare. So this is something that you use less of over time and you end up with an ecosystemic process in the soil. You're stimulating the soil ecosystem with a little bit of technology and some basic life science. Simple stuff, this is the future of biological agriculture. From the compost tea and the applications of high-tech compost inoculums, we dynamically increase the life in the soil. Life, bio, dynamic, 
to increase the activity, biodynamics. This is the work of Rudolf Steiner and the applications of inoculums to the soil. This we can do to increase fertility and out in the broad acre, we can cover more distance with less energy inputs. But there's a limit to how far we can go. We can only apply so much before it starts getting inefficient. The natural system has limits to its sustainable application of area. Area and edge, the size of a field, before you get another element. You can lay down crop fields of diversity, but there must be interactions with other elements like trees, animals, pasture. By permaculture design, the interactivity between all the different elements gives us the fertility. That's what gives us the sustainability. The animals to the pasture, the crops to the trees, the interactivity. We can lay out monoculture and we know it's not sustainable. One crop over a great area. We could do the same thing with multiple crops, but there is a limit. So we need to look at the increment of size application of trees to animals to crops to even aquaculture. This is the ecosystemic diversity that gives us a truly abundant, hopeful and sustainable future to look forward to. Thank you.